Okay, so we're going to see how to solve this homework right now and the theory for what we just did, uh, which is confined strength. We have already done the test of unconfined compression strength, right? In unconfined compression strength, what we do is we subject the rock to an axial load and then measure how much load it can take. And this is the, the result. Mm, let me get my camera here. You already did this for the first laboratory, and and basically, you get a rock sample subjected to axial stress with no confining from the sides. You can measure stress as a function of strain in the axial direction. And this will give you something like this, where the maximum stress is what we call unconfined compression strength. We haven't done this so far, but we'll do it now. For this case, you can also make a more circle. A more circle, remember, is going to be always a representation of the state of stress where in the x-axis you put the principal stresses and in this case the axial stress on this phase at failure is going to be a value somewhere over here and the maximum value that it can take is going to be the value of UCS, and the confinement in this case, because it's unconfined, is going to be equal to zero. So as I move from here to there, what you will, the equivalent picture of that in more circle will be a more circle that grows until it gets to this final point, which is the unconfined compression strength. In this case, the, un the confining is zero and the maximum principal stress is sigma one. But what you should remember from this case is that when you get to failure, although this one is unconfined compression strength, ideally if your sample is uh, tall enough, this will develop a failure in shear. So it's a loading in compression, but it's a failure in shear. And sometimes uh, you develop failure not only in one plane, but sometimes in two planes. The angle of failure, we saw this last class, is related to the friction angle and is 45 degrees plus the friction am angle divided by two. So what you have to remember from here is that load rocks uh, are going to load at some point if the stresses in two different directions, in two perpendicular directions are very different from each other. And for, an, for a cemented rock, that's going to be called the unconfined uh, compression strength. What we just did for that uh, package of coffee was a confined test, or sometimes also called a triaxial test. And it's called triaxial test because in addition to the axial stress, we have a radial stress. In the experiment that we just did, our radial stress was equal to 15 PSI, which is atmospheric pressure, 
because the pore pressure inside the granular material was zero because it was under vacuum. And then we added a additional axial stress that we calculated to be how much it was? 500 divided a point, what was the area? 8.1, all right. So how much is 500 divided 8.1? That should be um, like 61.7. 61 so 61, let's say 62, 62 PSI at failure. If we look at that in the, in the more circle, but let me complete the picture first. This one shows something similar to what we had before, but it was a little bit more like this. It, it didn't actually reach a peak, but we just stopped it somewhere over there. But that still it's failing. It's just another type of failure. It's what is called a ductal failure. Opposite to this case, when the, the stress drops rapidly, that's called a brittle failure. And you have these fractures. Uh, when you have this ductal failure, the failure is distributed everywhere in small fractures around the sample, something that we couldn't observe because we had that uh, membrane surrounding the material. Okay, so for this case now, if I take it to the Morse circle, now we had a confining stress, which was 15 PSI. And we had a radial stress, which was 62. So let's say this is 15, uh, this should be 30, 45, 16, 60, 61 PSI. Almost four times, I, I, I'm trying to make a six, I do a sigma, 61. PSI. And if I draw the Morse circle for that, then it will have a center somewhere over here. And it will be a Morse circle like this. And if this one is at failure, this tells me that the friction line for this material is a line which is tangent to that, that circle. And for this line, the shear is proportional to the friction coefficient times the normal stress. And if you remember from the previous class, we said that in this case, this is the maximum principal stress, this is the minimum principal stress, that the maximum, the ratio of the stresses at failure would depend on the friction angle and it was uh, like this uh, 1 plus sine of 5 divided 1 minus sine of 5 and you can work with these equations to calculate what is the friction angle and it's going to be the inverse of the sine sigma 1 divided by sigma 3 minus 1 divided sigma 1 divided sigma 3 plus 1. So can you guys tell me now what was the friction angle of the ground coffee? And with that, we end this test. So that would be the the arc sine of uh, 3 divided by 5, right? Which is how many degrees? 36 degrees, okay. That was the, the friction angle of the coffee that we just tested in class. All right, guys. So.
uh, wh while you study for the exam, I recommend that you read also the book. And uh, on Monday, we'll talk a little more about triaxial strain, and we'll finish that. Okay? See you on Monday. <laughs>